هذه محاضرة Orofacial Pain لطلبة المرحلة الخامسة لكلية طب الأسنان جامعة بغداد لمادة جراحة الفم والوجه والفكين. Pain can be defined as a complex human uh, psychophysiologic experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. It is a multifaceted experience influenced by multiple factors, such as past pain experience, physical, cultural, cognitive, emotional, and medical aspects. The physiologic aspects of pain experience involve several processes, transduction, transmission, and modulation. This diagram shows the, uh, the uh, pain pathway from the noxious stimulation, which is either thermal, mechanical, or chemical, that is being received by the receptor that we call the nociceptor, then transmitted by the nerves to the spinal cord, and from the spinal cord it is transmitted to the thalamus, and from the thalamus transmitted to the cerebrum. Multiple classification systems for the orofacial pain. At the most basic level, it is appropriate to classify orofacial pains as primarily somatic, neuropathic, or psychological. In this lecture, we are going to address the somatic and the neuropathic pains. The main difference between somatic pain and neuropathic pain is that somatic pain arises from musculoskeletal or visceral structures interpreted through intact pain transmission and modulation systems whereas the neuropathic pain arises uh, from damaged or altered pain pathways it can be classified the i mean the neuropathic pain can be classified into paroxysmal or episodic and continuous neuropathic pain. The diagnostic evaluation uh, contains the following components. First, we have the chief complaint. The chief complaint, it is the patient's description of pain. It may provide valuable information to reach diagnosis. The second thing is the history of present illness. History of present illness entails and it should include the following points. The intensity of pain. The intensity of pain needs to be measured against the patient's own experience of pain, need for medication, and effect on lifestyle. The second thing is the site of pain. The patients should be asked to indicate the site of pain or the site of maximum pain intensity. They also should be encouraged to remember the events surrounding the onset of the pain and the time relations in terms of duration and frequency and any aggravating or relieving factors also should be determined and the presence or absence of associated factors such as redness or swelling of the face, flushing, tearing, nasal congestion, eyelid ptosis or facial numbness or facial weakness all need to be ascertained. A thorough medical and surgical history should be obtained from the patient, including any history of hospitalization or trauma to the face and the oral cavity. The physical examination consists of inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. The muscles of mastication and the muscles of the neck should be assessed and palpated for any tender or trigger points. A more thorough evaluation of the masticatory muscle and TMJ include evaluating the mandibular function, measuring the maximum opening and lateral and protrusive excursion, in addition to palpation of the lateral pole of the condyle for pain, swelling, clicking, crepitations. The examination should also include examining the dentition for any caries, or for the gingival and the periodontal health, and the examination of the uh, and the examination for the uh, dental occlusion. Neurological examination may include sensory testing with directional sense, sharp pain touch, light touch, 
hot and cold pressure. An important part of the examination is the neurological examination of all cranial nerves, especially the trigeminal and the facial nerves, in addition to the upper cervical nerve roots, C2 through C5. Since afferent from the upper cervical spine segments are relayed through the trigeminal brainstem complex, forming a trigeminal cervical network, which includes the three branches of the trigeminal nerve and the sensory nerves for the posterior head and neck. Activation of this network may result in referred pain perceived on one or both sides of the head, the eyes or sinuses, and the posterior head and neck. Clinical evaluation requires imaging in the form of plain radiographs like panoramic the OPG and preapical radiographs, or a more detailed imaging for the maxillofacial skeleton using CT scans or magnetic resonance imaging. Ultrasonography may be required when we are evaluating major salivary glands or the, some masses of the neck. Also, scintigraphy or bone scan with technetium 99 also may be needed to identify infection, tumors, or degenerative changes in the TMJ. Also, other investigations may be required, such as blood investigations, microbiological studies, diagnostic injections like local anesthetics, and biopsy of any suspicious masses or lesions. Pathogenic pain is one of the uh, common, of the most common pain encountered. This could be of pulpal, periodontal origin, or generating from cracked tooth or from dentinal pain. Now, pulpal pain may be sharp, throbbing, or dull. It can be spontaneous or provoked or exacerbated by percussion, thermal, or electrical stimuli. It is associated with compromised dental pulp due to deep caries, crown fracture, or recent dental work. Treatment is by removal of the carious lesion, tooth restoration, endodontic treatment, or even tooth extraction. Periodontal Pain, on the other hand, is localized, deep, continuous, associated with compromised periodontium, like gingiva periodontal ligament, exacerbated by biting, chewing, or percussion. Usually, there are signs of periodontal inflammation or abscess with or without tooth mobility. Preapical radiograph may aid in diagnosis. Treatment include drainage and debridement of periodontal pocket, scaling and root planing, in addition to periodontal surgery, endodontic treatment, or tooth extraction. The cracked tooth, it is associated with a fractured tooth with a history of trauma or restorative dental work. Pain is usually sharp, spontaneous, or brief, provoked by biting, chewing, or percussion. It, uh, it is usually detected by clinical examination. Whereas dentinal pain or dentinal pain is associated with brief, sharp, pain provoked by different kinds of stimuli to the dentine, like hot or cold drinks. It is caused by stimulation of exposed dentinal tubule and cementum that may result from precession of the periodontium or possible erosion of dentinal structures. Treatment options may include mouthwashes or desensitizing toothpaste, tooth restoration or endodontic treatment. Source of pain is oral mucous membrane disorders. Diseases of the oral mucosa are numerous and have a variety of local and systemic causes. Pain may be a symptom of the disease process or secondary to an associated process like infection or related to damaged oral mucosa. Typically, pain is associated with oral mucosa lesions including ulcers, vesicles, bully, erosions, erythema, or red and white patches. Treatment depends on the proper diagnosis. Options may include topical or systemic analgesics and corticosteroids. Temporomandibular disorders are also considered as one of the common causes of pain, and they are subclassification of uh, musculoskeletal disorders. Temporomandibular disorder symptoms are more commonly seen in women than in men, and many symptoms seem to arise in adolescence or the early 20s and may continue intermittently well into the middle age. Disorders of temporomandibular joint are also considered to be a common cause of pain.
The, these include the internal derangement, such as disc displacement with and without reduction. These disorders are the result of condyle disc incoordination that influences the temporomandibular joint biomechanics. Another type of these disorders is temporomandibular joint subluxation and dislocation. The other temporomandibular joint disorders include inflammatory disorders such as capsulitis or synovitis, osteoarthritis, which is defined as a low inflammatory arthritic condition, either primary or secondary to trauma or other acute or chronic overload situation, and rheumatoid arthritis. In this CT here, this CT shows the uh, resorption of the head of the condyle associated uh, with the uh, rheumatoid arthritis or with osteoarthritis. And here, this radiograph also showing severe resorption of the head of the condyle. In temporomandibular joint disorders, pain is usually localized to the preauricular area during jaw function with the presence of painful click or crepitus during mouth opening. In addition, there may be limitation of the mouth opening, which is normally uh, more than 35 millimeter. And also, we may have deviated uh, deviation during the uh, painful jaw movements. CT and MRI may be needed to reach the diagnosis. Of temporomandibular joint disorder usually include patient education and self-care instructions in addition to medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and non-opioid analgesics. Physical therapy is also important through exercise program, occlusal supplements. Surgery is only indicated when non-surgical therapy has been ineffective and it is not indicated in patients who are asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic or as a preventive measure. Surgical interventions for the temporomandibular joint disorders include erythrocentesis, erythroscopic surgery, and open surgery. In erythrocentesis, it is a conservative treatment that involves an intraarticular lavage with or without deposition of hyaluronic acid or corticosteroids. It is mainly indicated in cases of disc displacement without reduction. In this picture here, you can see the process of the lavage when we introduce two cannulae into the joint, into the superior joint space with uh, lavage using the normal saline. Proscopy is a closed surgical procedure that allows direct observation for the joint tissue. It is performed mainly in the upper joint space and is utilized primarily for lysis and lavage, but also for ablation of adhesions.